All right, so let's see if you can figure out how to solve this simple little math word problem about money. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. A collection of 49 nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. How many of the coins are nickels? All right, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so before I show you the answer, let's take another look at the problem. So a collection of 49 nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. How many of the coins are nickels? Now, uh, we're talking about U.S. currencies here, so if you don't understand what a nickel is or a penny is, I will uh, review that in just one second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. Uh, the correct answer here is nine nickels. All right, so if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A-plus for being able to solve this simple math problem. And uh, this is a math word problem, to be uh, precise. But uh, great job, right? You got the answer. Now, I'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem. And I didn't want to describe uh, the problem as saying, hey, solve the algebra word problem, because a lot of people don't like algebra. They might be like, algebra, I don't want to do that, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Uh, I'm just going to go to another video. But it's interesting if I say don't, you know, if I just say solve a problem, a lot of you probably got the right answer and you didn't use algebra. So when it comes to solving any problem, especially a math problem, you know, never sell yourself short. See what you can do with it. And if you didn't use algebra and use some other creative technique to get the right answer, well, that is fantastic. But uh, this particular problem is not that difficult. But uh, you want to still understand how we can use algebra to solve a problem like this because in uh, much more complex money problems, money math word problems to be precise, you're definitely going to need some algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And the first thing is, is that we are dealing with a math word problem. So always use the rule of three, which is to read the problem at least three times and make sure you understand the question. Okay, so we are dealing with nickels and pennies. And we know that the total uh, of these nickels and pennies in terms of the value is worth 85 cents. Uh, and the question is, is how many of these coins are nickels? So uh, as I promised, uh, just in case uh, some of you don't understand what a nickel is or a penny is, because maybe this is not your main currency, let's do a quick review right now. All right, so we're talking about U.S. currency here. So uh, this is just going to be a very, very fast uh, review. So we have bills, right? So things like, you know, a piece of paper. So like a $1 bill. We have $5 bills, $20 bills. But when it comes to coins, right, in U.S. currency, we have different coins. So we have a penny, and then we have a nickel, okay? And, of course, I'm not going to uh, actually draw these things out, but a nickel is a little bit bigger than a, canny, a penny. Excuse me, a penny is copper, a nickel is silver, but, of course, a lot of you are going to say, not anymore, Mr. YouTube Math Man, they used to be. Anyways, that's beside the point. Then we have a dime, and then we have a quarter. All right, so let me, actually, let me go ahead and break this out a little bit uh, further here. So a penny... A nickel, this is a, actually this is a good review for a lot of you that even uh, use U.S. currency. Then we have a dime and then we have a quarter. All right, so a penny is worth uh, one cent. Okay, so this is the little cent symbol. A nickel is worth five cents, all right, cents, uh, S or C-E-N-T-S. A dime is worth 10 cents and a quarter is worth 25 cents. Now, a dollar, okay, a one dollar bill in uh, U.S. currency. So let me actually draw this out real quick here. All right, so one dollar is worth how much? Well, it's worth 100 cents, right? So if you got 100 pennies, uh, you have one, the equivalent of one dollar, right? So nobody walks 
wants to walk around with 100 pennies in their pocket, they're going to say, hey, just give me a, a dollar bill for that. It's much easier. So how many quarters do you need uh, to have one dollar? Well, you have 25 cents for one quarter. Well, 25 times four is 100 cents. So four quarters would be equivalent to one dollar. All right. So hopefully this is pretty much uh, you know, a review for most of you out there. But again, I do have a lot of people and I'm grateful for that from other countries outside of the US that watch my videos. All right, so there you go. That is what a nickel is and that is what a penny is. So the problem is a collection of 49 nickels. Right now here, you know, we can't split these nickels in half. There's a nickel, there's a nickel, there's a nickel. These are discrete objects, right? And uh, here we have some pennies. So in other words, to get to 85 cents, we can't be like, oh, I can take, uh, you know, two and a half nickels and then, you know, no, no, we're gonna have to have uh, whole number discrete values. That word in mathematics, discrete, means like one, two, there's nothing in between, right? So this is basically, you know, integer values or whole number values. All right, so a collection of 49 nickels and uh, pennies. So we got this big collection. Uh, the total value is worth 85 cents. How many of the coins are nickels? All right, so once again, I'm going to be using algebra here. And the question is looking for nickels. So what I'm going to do is establish a variable, right? So when we're talking about algebra, we want to use a variable to represent an unknown value. And I'm going to uh, have the variable n represent the amount of nickels, right? Now, n is the number of nickels that we're looking for, okay? Not the monetary value. How many coins are nickels? Okay, so uh, you got to be um, careful here. Uh, we're looking for the number of nickels, right? Not uh, the monetary amount of how many, uh, how much those nickels are worth, right? So I'm going to let n equal the number of coins that are nickels. And when we do that, then we can um, uh, set up some simple expressions to help us out to solve this problem. All right, so let's let n equal the number of nickels. Now, we do know that there is 49 uh, coins total, right? Because there's a collection of 49 uh, coins of nickels and pennies. So if n is the number of nickels, well, how many pennies do we have? Well, if we have 49 uh, coins total and we have n number of nickels, right? So if we uh, just subtract the nickels away from 49, the total amount. Well, that is how many pennies we must have. So if n was 10, right? So if we had 10 nickels, how many uh, pennies would we have? Well, it would be just 49 minus 10 or 39. All right, so this is our uh, expression right here for pennies. So pennies is equal to 49 minus n. And notice that I want to put this in parentheses. And I'll tell you why here in just one second. But in algebra, as a matter of fact, I'll just tell you right now, anytime you have a sum or difference, in other words, you're adding or subtracting something with a variable. So if I have n plus 3 or 49 minus n, just get in the habit of putting parentheses around these expressions. These are what we call grouping symbols, and this is really going to help you avoid making mistakes when we set up an equation. And that's what we need to do here because we have a variable n. We like to solve for n because if we can figure out what n is, well, that's going to answer the question. But we can't, um, you know, figure out what n is equal to unless we build ourselves an equation. So we're going to have to go back and revisit uh, the problem. So what part of the, this information have we not yet used? Well, we haven't talked about this part right here, and that is the 85 cents. So we know that a collection of uh, these 49 nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. Now, anytime you see the word is in a math word problem, that uh, word is means the equal sign. Okay, so a collection of 49 nickels and pennies, the value of that is equal to 85 cents. So with an equal sign, we can build an equation. And here we can build an algebraic equation so we can solve for n. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So that's going to look like this. Now, there's a couple different approaches we could take. I'm going to be using decimals here for a very specific reason. But uh, before I kind of explain this equation, let's just kind of think about this. So the number of nickels that we have times five cents, because each nickel is worth five cents, right? So if I have two nickels, well, that's going to be what? Two times five cents, which of course would be what? That would be 10 cents or one dime. 
right? So that's 10 cents. So the number of nickels times 5 cents plus the number of pennies that we have times 1 cents, the total value of this collection is worth 85 cents. Now I'm dealing with cents here, and my answer, the value of this collection is in cents. So I could build an equation where I have n, which is the number of nickels, times five. Now I'm using 0 0.05 for a very specific reason. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna write a, uh, an optional equation here for those of you that might be a bit confused. Okay, so the num number of nickels, remember that is the variable n that I uh, set up. I can go, well, that's n times five because each nickel is worth five cents plus the number of pennies is, uh, is what? Well, remember we set that up as 49 minus n. That's how many pennies that we have and each penny is worth one cent. So I can multiply this times one cent, right? So how many, if I have two pennies times one, well, that's two cents worth of pennies, right? And that's equal to 85 cents. So you could solve this equation and get the right answer. Now, the reason why I'm using decimals here uh, to represent the values, um, the value of uh, the nickels and the dimes and our cents is because if I, this problem was the, uh, let's say I kind of modified the question and I said the number of nickels and of, uh, there's a collection of nickels and pennies and the value of this uh, collection is a dollar ten or something like that. Okay. Now this is a different kind of deal because when you are talking about money uh, math word problems, your dollars are going to be integer values and your cents, okay, your coin value is going to be in a decimal. Okay, so you just want to get in the habit of that. So a nickel. Here we can get away with it because the, the uh, total value of this collection is 85 cents. But if we had a dollar 85, well, then we want to express that 85 cents as 0.85 of a dollar. Okay, and that's a very, very common. So just uh, you know, be careful with that. But uh, here I'm going to use decimals just to kind of make this point extra clear. Again, you could set up this uh, uh, equation using the way I just showed you or we can use decimals. All right, doesn't doesn't make a difference because everything's gonna work out. So the number of nickels is N, right? So that's how many nickels we have times 0 0.05 of a dollar, all right? So again, I'm just doing this as a quick review uh, to talk about money math word problems. So 49 minus N is the number of pennies that we have, and each penny is worth 0 0.01 of a dollar, and uh, the total collection is worth uh, 0.85 or uh, 0.85 of a dollar. Okay, so we could solve this or we can solve the previous equation, but let's just go ahead and practice working with decimals. Now, the next step that we're gonna take is to solve this equation. So if you have your calculator uh, handy, you know, go ahead and uh, use it to help you with this, um, you know, with working with these decimals. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow my channel. Now, I started on YouTube a long time ago. I, I started my channel, I uh, actually, you know, made my channel, like I think it was like 14 years ago, but I really didn't start doing too much with it, maybe like 10 years ago. And even then, I was kind of inconsistent. I did some things, but maybe like around five years ago, I really started to put a lot of effort into it and, and get more consistent and try to get better and better and better and better. And the results show, okay, my channel has taken off this way because I focused more on it. I, you know, I put more effort into trying to get better on YouTube in terms of, you know, making uh, math uh, problems that are interesting and, you know, basically uh, trying to help people, trying to make math, you know, clear and understandable, right? But I guess the reason why I'm telling you this is because this is no different than you know, the path of anything that you want to learn, whether it's math or anything else. If you are inconsistent, you're going to get inconsistent results. It's the same thing with math. So if you want to improve in math, it's going to take time and it's going to take consistency, right? And, you know, I like to share, you know, my, you know, experience with YouTube as like a real lesson or a reminder to myself and just the way it is. You just can't cheat experience or time and effort. So if you're struggling with math, don't give up so soon, right? Stick with it and work through these, uh, you know, the challenges. But uh, here, 
I need your help to continue to get this message out to as many people as possible. So the best way to support my work is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. By the way, if you uh, enjoy uh, word math word problems, I post a ton of them on my YouTube channel. So, you know, that's why you want to hit that notification bell. And I try to mix it up from basic math to more advanced math. But if you need help with algebra or anything else, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this problem again, or solve this equation. I'm uh, using decimal values here just to emphasize that when it comes to monetary value, right? So if I have a dollar uh, 20, okay, this 0 0.20, this is 20 cents. Okay, so this is $1, uh, well, not $100, but $1 plus 20 cents, right? But we, we're not gonna write the 20 cents this way, okay? We're gonna write that 20 cents as 0 0.20 of a dollar, because most um, uh, math, uh, money math word problems, excuse me, that's kind of a <laughs> tongue twister there, um, uh, are going to involve, you know, uh, dollars and cents, right? It's very, very typical. So again, we just want to get used to working with those decimal values. Okay, so enough said there. Let's get into the algebra, which of course is everyone's favorite part. So we have n times 0 0.05 is going to be what? Well, that's just going to be 0 0.05 n. So anytime you are multiplying a variable times a number, put the number in front of the variable. That's called the coefficient, by the way. So here I have 49 minus n. Now, remember, I said you want to use parentheses, those grouping symbols, because here uh, we have this uh, 49 minus n, this expression in parentheses. We want to multiply it by 0 0.01. So this 0 0.01 needs to be multiplied by both the 49 and n. So 0 0.01 times 49 is 0.49 minus 0 0.01 times n is 0 0.01 or 0 0.01n. Okay, again, if you didn't have the parentheses here, this could be very easy uh, to confuse. And oftentimes, this is a very, very common mistake that I see when people are solving uh, math word problems, right? You always put parentheses around those expressions. And that, of course, is going to be equal to 0.85. All right, so now we need to go ahead and add like terms. So we got 0.01n here. And a um, actually, this is a negative 0.01n. So let me highlight that there. So I have 0.49 plus a negative 0.01n. So we could take that 0.05n and subtract it away from 0.01n. Here, we're just dealing with the coefficients, so we're going to end up with 0.04n plus 0.49 is equal to 0.85. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and subtract uh, 0.49 from both sides of the equation, and I'm going to end up with 0.04n is equal to 0.36. Okay, so one last step here. All I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.04, and you get n is equal to 9. Now, this equation would, would have been easier to solve if I just used cents. In other words, instead of 0 0.05 here, another, let me go ahead and highlight this again. Instead of having um, our nickel value as 0 0.05, I could have wrote as just n times 5, right? 5 cents plus 49, uh, 49 minus n times 1 cent is equal to 85 cents. And that is fine. Matter of fact, that would be the preferred way of solving this equation. But again, I'm doing this as, uh, you know, an opportunity to just talk about dollars and cents in uh, money, math, word problems. Okay, so again, n is 9. What is that, right? So n is 9. So before you uh, walk away from any problem, you know, review your solution. Okay, n is 9. What, did it, what does that mean? Well, let's go back to the setup here. Remember, uh, remember, when we set up the problem, we established a variable. Okay, we let n equal the number of nickels because our question is what? How many uh, coins are nickels? Right? Well, we just answer that. Uh, the correct answer is nine. All right, so hopefully this video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.